All right, I want to show you Gucci's bit. Hopefully you can see that. It's just a regular Mylar bit and it has a chain. And when I put it on him, I can put three fingers like that in between. Okay. So he'll stay right behind you. You can just wave a stick at him or just wiggle the reins. And he knows to back up, but he will test people because he's a baby and he wants to be in your space. So you just got to make sure everybody keeps him out of their space. The boy. And then to sidle up, I use his right hip, his opposite hip. He knows what to do now, but if he didn't come over, I just raise the stick. And then if he doesn't come over, I tap him in that right hip. Hey. So I take the reins over his head. Because sometimes if you get up there and put the reins over their head, they get a little confused. And then I just walk up to the mounting block. He's in my right hand right now. I switch him to my left hand. And he just knows to come over. But if he didn't, I would raise up my stick and I would tap over here. But you pull on the rein at the same time, because if you tap, they can walk away. And then you'll see he's going to look like, you got my stuff. And I give him a little cookie once. Here you go. Once I get on. Okay. Then I just sit here for a bit. And then I'll turn you back on. I just want you to see his routine, how he goes, and that way I can talk to you. So I don't do lateral flexion all the time anymore. So it's not as good as it was but he understands it. You just got to pull lightly. He's a pretty sensitive horse. So if you pull real hard, he's going to spin around. But if you just use light pressure, he will get it. And for his gait, he can, he does a flat walk and he does a running walk, even though he's a Rocky Mountain horse. So when he's doing those gates, I have his head like that. But when I do his Rocky gait, I have his head higher or kind of on a looser rein. So he's been ridden with spurs and a stick, so he is used to that. And uh, when I start off, I don't go walking around the arena because I'm always trying to keep the horses slow to start. So I just walk circles. So I'm just going to make like a 10 meter circle. And you'll see, he naturally likes to put his head down or somebody taught him that. So if anything, you might have to pick up to get his head up a little bit. So if he gets it way down there, you just pick up and then just release. Uh, he doesn't require much leg to make him go. I'm going to pick up and then release. So he is super smart. You can just think things. And he will just usually do them. Okay. So a couple of more circles. So I'm always just trying to make sure they're bending, they're paying attention, they're not super fast. He will walk slower once he's tired, but when he first starts out, this is usually the speed he goes. And if you're nervous, he might go faster. I'm pretty relaxed. So now I make the serpentine where I just weave back and forth. I like to do all these lateral movements to make sure the horse is paying attention, make sure they're warmed up. And uh, also to prevent injury. So I just weave back and forth. Uh, and it's just right rein and right leg. The other side supports and then left rein, left leg. You can hear him complaining. <laughs> He's a funny horse. So just look where you want to go. I'm hardly using my reins to turn him just a little. So we're trying, this is a super smart horse. If you need something to help you make a name for yourself, this, this could be it. Because he's smart, you can teach him lots of tricks. Uh, you can teach him all sorts of groundwork stuff that's cool to give demos with. And he would like, he loves attention. Alright, so now we're going to go around the arena. So this is his flat walk. So I didn't ask him to speed up or anything. He just usually goes to speed. And I have a very light, light, light contact with my legs in case he slows down. So I like to make circles around the arena. So I'm going to make one at this end, one in the middle, and one at the other end. I am just steering. I'm holding light contact. So I feel like a pound or less than a pound of pressure on his mouth. And I'm just keeping my hand still. And you'll see he's shaking his head up and down. And sometimes his ears flop. And so again, he's still young. So you want to... Make sure you have the feel of his gauge before you try doing it on a looser rein. 
Otherwise their gates will start to get messed up because they don't know what to do. He's had training, but again, he hasn't had years of it, at least not with me. Okay, so now we're on our second circle. So I squeeze and relax just a little with my left rein. He doesn't turn. I press with my outside rein and outside leg. Now I'm just looking around my circle. His head right there is pretty good. I don't like it too low. I don't like it too high. Like it neutral if possible. Now I'll make the circle at the other end. Uh, so with him, body position wise, when you ride him, he can just be neutral. Oh, he got confused. Um, just be neutral, sit up nice and tall. You don't want to lean forward because he's on the trotty side when he's loose. So if they're trotting under saddle, make sure people are not riding in their thigh or using their thighs and they're sitting back. So if anything, you want to be neutral or sitting back more in a little bit of a chair seat. And you want his head neutral a little bit up as you go faster. And with all the horses I have, I bring my energy up to make them go. I bring it down to make them slow down or stop. So if you're talking and you don't put any leg on them or you just relax, I'm going to do it right now. I'm just going to take my legs off and relax. See how he just stops? He's back up. So squeeze, release, squeeze, release on the rein. And I'm just steering with my legs as we go backwards. So if you bring your energy down or somebody's talking or something like that, he's going to stop which is a safety thing I put in all the horses. So if somebody's falling off or something's going wrong, hopefully they will stop. Now we're going to leg yield. So reins to the right, left leg on, right leg off. He knows this very well. And I just lightly touch him with my leg or kind of shift my weight, and he just does it now. Um, but I always bring my energy up when I want them to go, bring it down when I want them to slow down. But that confuses people. So when you ride him, if you bring your energy down or just relax, he most likely is going to stop. Of course, you can change it. It will go away if people don't do it correctly. So when I'm at his slower gates, I just kind of alternate my legs. Right leg, left leg. Right leg, left leg. And I'm going to push him slightly over. So see how he stopped a couple of times? And he's just like, am I supposed to stop? I felt like your leg came off. So he does try to listen and do the right thing, which is a blessing. And you'll see my hands are in front of the horn, uh, probably three inches. And I have a rubber rein because that helps with grip, and gloves on because that helps with grip, and it's warm out. So another leg yield off my left leg. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. So he has lots of different speeds. It's just practicing what speed you want. I always like to make sure they have like three different speeds. Okay, so I leg yield usually four times. This is just my arena routine. Oh boy. Okay, now we're gonna stop. So all I did was think stop. Now I would turn on the forehand, so a little right rein. And then mostly leg and just look so everything's light with him if you overdo it you're going to make him move a fair amount and might make him anxious because he's a more sensitive horse so just keep everything relaxed and just kind of ride with your mind and your seat and a little leg and a little hand so now we're going to repeat the pattern so we're just making 20 meter circles so this is what he knows. You can change it to whatever you want, but if there's confusion, do this arena routine and he'll be like, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay. And then from there you can change it, but you always try to go to what what's that horse know? So it will make him feel comfortable while he's going through this transition and then we can change things. That's why it's best to use the same bit or something pretty similar. Uh, this crested saddle, this is a wade with a wide tree seems to fit him pretty well. Okay. 
So I work a lot on straight lines. And you can see we're heading down towards that pole. He stays pretty straight even if I just kind of throw my hands away. Rockies are much straighter than walking horses. Walking horses tend to wobble. <laughs> but these guys, they're a little easier about that. Okay, so I'm just squeezing and relaxing on my inside rein once in a while to get the bend. And I'm just alternating my legs, right, left, right, left, just kind of going with his belly as his belly goes back and forth. So you'll know he's doing his flat walk or his running walk when his ears are moving and his head's shaking up and down. When he does his rocky gait, of course, those things will stop. But he's fun. He has a lot of things he can do. So our last circle. facility is busy you know you see what it's like here there are things going on today it's quite quiet but it's not as busy as like a show stable so yeah, the show stable indoor arena all those things we're gonna have to get used to them okay so now we go down the quarter line of the arena we're gonna leg yield them over so he already knows and he's already doing it on his own so all I did was turn down the quarter line and he's like I got this memorized gay I got it Let's walk over the jump so you can see this over the jump. Good boy. But he can he can jump small jumps if you want to jump. He's, he's quite balanced. Okay, so now we're gonna leg yield again. So I just shifted my weight and he just went on his own. Okay. So to make it less boring, we're gonna cut across. We're gonna do two more leg yields. Uh, if you're going to ride with a snapple, I like to use the uh, loose ring snapples because they can't grab a hold of those and lean on them. He used to lean on the bit a little bit in the beginning. On the trail, I always like the shanks because, you know, the customers aren't as quick with their hands or they don't know what to do or they do the wrong thing. And so the shank will stop the horse faster so they usually don't have to do a one rein stop or anything like that. Alright, so now I'm going to stop in a minute, so I'm going to stop riding, take my leg off, so I didn't even get the word hoe out, and he stopped. So now, when I rest them, I always put them on a loose rein, so he can put his head down and relax, and then I'll turn you back on, but uh, I like to rest them a couple minutes so they just get used to standing around. Okay, so now we're going to do another turn on the forehand. Look, I just shortened my reins, and he's like, got it. Now what to do? Now a little leg. Okay. So now we're going to start for gaping, which he just went into. So that's going towards his rocky gate. I don't want to do that yet. So let's try more like a running walk because you want to make sure you have lots of different speeds that you can use or you know, go along with other horses. So I'm going to stay below his rocky gate. So if I feel that uh, footfall change, you know, I'm just slowing it down. And then what will happen is as he goes around and gets more relaxed and knows we're not doing that, he'll start shaking his head more, reaching up more. And then his ears will usually start flopping. So I usually do this for about five minutes around the arena. And I like to go in circles, but this arena is so fun even. So um, if I can't stay in a circle because the footing's so bad, which it kind of is right now in here, I just go around the whole arena. Do this for the next five minutes. So I'll show you a little bit and then I'll turn you on at the end of it. So right now, like he pulled his head up, I just applied a little pressure like no we're not doing that. Keep, keep your head down. So his head stays down when I do his flat walk and running walk and then I bring his head a little higher or neutral when I go to do his run. But I always usually start with a slower gait and then speed them up anytime I take a break. There we go. So this is about the speed we want first running walk. 
Okay, I'll turn you back on at the end. Okay, okay so we're towards the end of our five minutes of going around the arena, so we're going to stop. Good boy. Now, I didn't pull on the bit or anything, and I don't make him tuck his head way down, because again, I don't want him putting his head down too much, because if his rocking gait won't be as good. So let's, let's turn on the haunches. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. So now we're going to do our running with this direction. Uh, if he pulls on the bit or anything like that, I just hold and I just wait for him to release and then I release. He doesn't now, but they, of course they test everyone. <laughs> so you never know what they're going to do. All right, so you see his head's going up and down. His head's kind of below my horn. I just have a light contact. So if his head comes up too much, I just apply pressure to bring it back down because otherwise... Like there, I just touched him with my stick and he sped up, but he picked his head up, so he went into his rocky gait. So his gaits are pretty set if you know how to ride a gated horse. If, you know, someone gets on, tucks his head way down like a dressage horse and, you know, starts riding more uh, forward in the two-point, that's a good way to make a, a gated horse start uh, trotting. So you don't want anybody to do that on him. If you're going to practice two-point or anything like that, then, you know, do it at a walk. And if you're going to jump, I would either gate to the jump or canter to the jump. Or once you get, I don't know if you can hear me with this wind. Once you get his gates really down, if you want to trot him, you can. But make sure you have exact cues so he knows. Like you put his head down and you lean forward and then you tell him the word trot. So he doesn't get confused and do the wrong thing. All right, so we're going to do this five minutes, and we'll put you back on. Okay. So we're getting to the end of the five minutes. So you see, you could do this on longer range. It's just not going to be as good. And then, you know, they speed up and their head wobbles all over, but he's not going to run away. Okay, so we're going to stop, so breathe out. Oh. Oh boy, let's back up a little bit because he, he put a little pressure on the bit. Okay, now we're going to do another turn on the haunches. Okay, so now we're going to take a couple minutes break and then we're going to do his rocky gait, right? Okay, so now we're going to do his rocky gait. So, Got him kind of towards his running walk. I'm going to squeeze with both legs instead of alternating now. Okay, you see his head come up. Now, if you feel a little soft bounce in there, then go just a little bit faster because that's usually a fox trot. Remember, I said he could do a lot of stuff. So, if you feel a soft bounce and you don't like it, bring his head up a little higher and a little bit more leg. Until you feel that little kind of wiggle in the saddle. And their step is much shorter than the walking horse. You just gotta get used to that. So you see, his head's kind of up. And I just leave it for now until he's really good at this gait. So now we're going to go around five minutes at this gate. So you'll see his head's kind of level with my horn or just a little bit above it. Sometimes with the Rockies you'll feel a little hop step when they try to like gate a lope or Kind of cantering a little step up here and there. If they do that, you just slide the bit and then press with your leg again. Okay, I'll put you back on at the end. There, he's gate eloping. <laughs> okay, now the easiest way to get a canter out of him is just to kind of let him fall into it. So just speed him up, let him kind of gate elope, and then add a little bit more leg. And he'll stay usually pretty collected. He can go a lot faster if you want. So there he kind of fell out of it.
but that's usually the easiest way. And then he does drift a little bit as you make circles. But that'll just take time. So I usually canter a little bit here and there, and then I walk. But we were just gating for five minutes, and then we did a little canter. So I'm going to stop, give him a break, and then we'll go the other way. His left lead's better than the right. The right might take you a couple of times to actually get it. Um, but he's understanding, and he's getting stronger. And then uh, with the Rockies, especially when you do, or any of the horses, you do that racking gait. And we're keeping their head up a little bit. When they're loose, I like them to trot. I trot a lot of poles. When they're loose, building their hindquarters, building their muscles around their strength because, of course, they're racking and bringing their head up isn't the best for their back. So we're trying to prevent that by doing other things at other times to help them with their strength and everything. Okay, our break's over, so we're going to start walking faster and he got a little slower by the mountain walk like do I have to do it and you're just like yes dude dude okay thanks for a little running walk now we're gonna speed up so add both legs sit back a little bit keep your hands kind of corn level there we go and you'll get a feel of it just might take some time and I just half bolt if he gets too fast. If he canters, I slide the bit across their tongue just lightly. And you just keep the, your weight back and kind of in your seat and down in your feet. Don't lean forward unless you want to canter. There he came out of it a little bit. If you're not sure, you just turn around, look at their tail. You should see their tail bopping up and down, which is his. Now he's half cantering, so he's doing that little gait a little. Just slip a bit lightly. Okay, so we're going to do this for the next five minutes, then we'll turn you back on. You're going around, and you're getting to the end of your gating, and you feel him do a little hoppy step like that. You can get him into the canter. So getting his right leads a little bit harder than getting his left. So you just want to feel it. And I just keep my weight up. You can feel he's going first left lead right now. Boy, now he's got his right lead. But he's faster this way. And then you just come back to eat. Not stopping, Gucci. He's like, no. We come back to stop and then take a break. Okay? So you just practice that over and over again as picking up your lead somewhere, the correct lead. He's, you know, of course, will try to go towards his left. But you might as well use that gate elope to help you so you wouldn't feel him hop and then you feel, oh, he is up. He's going for his right lead, then just let him go. I can always keep my weight to the outside. There, he's got it. He dropped a couple steps. Now he's half cantering and half beating. And then you can tilt a little forward if you're not getting it. Because that helps him get their canter. He puts his head down, he just looks up. I carry trying to slow down the gate. I just gave him a little tap with the stick. And now we're back to gating. Uh, 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 uh. There you go. So again, he has all the arena basics. Go oh boy. And then I'm gonna stop way away from that gate. He has all the arena basics, it's just you know finishing it for how you want it. But he can do everything. But can he do it how you want it? And uh, it'll just take time for him to learn and you guys to figure each other out. But he can canter on both leads, but you gotta have some feel or you won't get that right lead as easily. But you can go in the round pen, that'll help you to get it if you're not getting it for some reason or let me know. Okay. So he's moving a little bit, right? So I always go, well, if you're moving, I guess you don't wanna break. So let's side pass a little bit. We'll show you side pass. So that's off the left leg. Good job, buddy. Good boy. And let's go off the right leg. 
so he's got the turn on the forehand, forehand turn on the haunches side pass he has all of it just needs finishing Good boy and then uh i'll show you opening the gate although there's a video of that he will just try things like when you get to the gate do i have to stand next to it and you just push him and tell him yes and he might move away and you just push him again and tell him yes so he is a tester which is great for us and people <laughs> to make them learn so he will test people like oh, i'm not doing that with you and you're like yeah you are but he's pushover So see, he'll act like he doesn't know how to do stuff, and he does. He's just testing. Right? Come on. See, he'll move right over to the gate, but otherwise he'd pretend like, I don't know how to open the gate. He does. He's just being a goofball. Okay, let's go back over here. And so he's fine on all this footing. I want you to see the footing up here. This is the uh, gravel, so he doesn't, many horses don't like this on their feet. So if you were going to put it like this all the time, all that gravel, then you'd want to put boots on or shoes on. All right, but that should help you have an idea what he's like. On trail, he's pretty easy. It's more the arena. That'll probably be a little bit more difficult. But on trail, he usually just goes, and he's usually not very spooky or lucky or anything, right? You're a good boy.